Hey, I'm Srinit, the creator of Maximize Your Apple with Men. Today, we're going to dive into a game-changing solution for one of the biggest productivity killers, email overload. If you're like most knowledge workers, you probably spend a significant portion of your day managing emails. In fact, did you know that the average worker spends about 14 days per year just dealing with emails? That's two weeks of your life spent on something that doesn't add a lot of value to your work. It's the equivalent of an annual vacation. But what if I told you there's a way that you can automate this entire process with AI? I'm talking about sorting your inbox, drafting replies, everything. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up an AI-powered system that can handle your emails for you, help you reclaim your time and focus, and work on what truly matters. This system was inspired by ideas from Cal Newport's book, A World Without Email, and it utilizes tools like GPT-4 and Zapier. So now let's actually get into how this all works. The system we'll be setting up revolves around a three inbox model, receiving, sorting, and delivery. Now this might sound complex, but it's actually really simple and incredibly effective. First, we have the receiving inbox. Think of this as the front desk where all of your emails check in. This is your current main inbox where every email lands, and here all incoming emails are gathered just like a front desk collecting all the mail. Next, we have the sorting inbox. This is where the magic happens. AI, acting like an efficient mailroom clerk, scans and categorizes each email. It then decides what needs your attention and what doesn't. And in the sorting inbox, the AI scans and categorizes emails into four groups, respond, read, relax, revisit. Finally, we have the delivery inbox. This is your new priority inbox and only the emails that actually require your response or that you wanna see will end up here and all the rest are handled by AI, freeing you up from unnecessary distractions. So only important emails that require your action or attention end up in the delivery inbox, allowing you to focus on what matters most. So now you understood conceptually what this all looks like, let's actually execute building this thing. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to go to what they call the GPT Assistant Playground. You can find this just by doing a search for GPT Assistance. It'll take you to a page and then you will basically see a link that says the assistance playground. So this is where you're actually going to configure your assistant. The main difference between assistance and the standard chat GPT interface that you're using is that this is completely autonomous. Once you set it up, it actually works on its own. So you don't actually have to prompt it or do anything. And it can do a whole lot of things. You can actually store files inside of your assistant. So for example, if you have certain links that you want to include, for me, for example, often I will get a request for an interview and people want a link to a calendar. So I made sure that the assistant actually had access to that. And the handful of times that somebody has sent me an interview request, I tested it and it worked perfectly. It actually replied with the link to book an interview. So you can see here that your instructions are actually going to be very simple. And the idea here is to make this very simple for one reason. The, the simpler that you make this, the easier it's going to be for the AI. So you can see here that my instructions are extensive. I basically have revised them a bit so that I don't have to deal with newsletters or other things. So the categorization method that you're seeing here, respond, read, relax, revisit, actually comes from a book called Uptime that was written by a woman named Laura May Martin, who is Google's executive productivity advisor. And the concept behind it is actually to just sort email the same way you sort laundry. One of the reasons this works so well, particularly with AI, is the fact that it's simple and pretty much any email can fall into one of these four categories. So that's the first step is making sure that this assistant is built and set up. So to do that, what you're going to do here, you can see here that you have a little thing that says create assistant. Then what you're going to do is you're going to actually set things up inside of Zapier. So what I'm going to do is move the Zapier screen over here to my main screen. Now, this is where you're going to configure three different inboxes. What the first thing we have to do is to set up the email inbox that's specifically for the AI to do the sorting. Your primary inbox is already set up, obviously. So what you want to do first is create an inbox that is something like this, chief of staff at unmistakablemedia.com. This is an email inbox that you yourself will actually never use. This inbox basically is the AI's personal inbox where it does all of the sorting. It's the sorting inbox. And the key here is setting up a forward from your main email address to the chief of staff inbox. And you can do that in Google if you just go into the Gmail settings. And we'll get into the chief of staff email inbox here in just a second. But then what happens is inside of this inbox, what happens is every email that gets sent to this inbox basically tells the AI assistant. And if you, if we edit the zap here really quick, you'll be able to see the configuration. So you can see here 
that when you go here and you select conversation with an assistant as your action or event in Zapier, you then get the ability to select a specific assistant from this dropdown. So you'll go ahead and choose the assistant that you created. That's why you want to name it ideally something that is easy to remember. So that way, when you get to this step right here, it will understand, you'll be able to find it very easily. Now, the key here is to make sure that it only outputs one thing from this first prompt. The reason being that we want to keep this simple. So you can see here, it, for me, it's just reply, read, relax. Those are the only three categories. And then what you're going to do is you're going to run test and see, you know, how it categorizes the different emails. And once it looks at what the email is, you can see here, it'll tell you relax. So that's done. So what we're going to do now is go on to the next step. So this here is really important to make sure that you don't end up with the emails that you don't want to have. So what you do here is you're going to separate these into two different paths. On this path, basically, Everything here is marked by the AI as respond. That means it requires a response from you. And so those are the more important ones. And so then what you're going to do, after you've tagged something or labeled something as respond, you're going to send another conversation to the assistant and you're going to tell it to draft a reply to the email that was sent, assuming that it's an email that needs a response. And... It will then send you a draft reply. So what we're going to do is we'll take the output from this step. And you can see here in this case, we have a reply for somebody who had sent me a podcast pitch. And basically what it does here is it outputs close to perfect response. It even included my Calendly link for availability. And then what you're going to do is you're going to forward this email to the new email address that you have set up. And what I recommend before you actually set up the forwarding from your main email address is to actually test it by forwarding a few things to the chief of staff or the AI sorting inbox. One other thing, when you set this up, there are a couple of things that you want to get right here. Personally, I think that the biggest mistake I made right here was actually having it come from the assistant's inbox. That, because otherwise, you're not going to be able to immediately reply to the person who originally sent it. So instead of putting the sender's original email address in the body, what you can do is you can just grab that from the previous step. So if you look here, we can go to custom and we can say, okay, who's the person who sent this? And we can just choose that person who sent it. So in this case, we're going to say who it's from. And then you have a name and you can select that. And then you can decide whether you want it to be HTML or whatever it is and whatever inbox label you want it to have. And then this automatically, along with the original email and the draft, gets forwarded to your private inbox where you see only the things that you need to see. Now, what about the things that you don't need to see? That's what the second path is for. So on this second path, you're basically going to send anything here that gets categorized as something that doesn't require a response. So here, our path rules are going to be really different. So basically here, I just have relax, which means it labels whatever it is that's in the inbox as relax and then archives it in the inbox and that's it. And this is a really good way to reduce the amount of emails that you get for things like notifications. Because if most people actually looked at their email inboxes, they would see that 98% of the stuff that they get in their inboxes doesn't actually require a response. And by doing this, you actually reduce the amount of irrelevant emails that you have to deal with on a daily basis. So that, in a nutshell, is the basic setup. So there are a couple of things that you can do that will make this more advanced. The first thing you can do here is you can go into this and make these parameters more specific. For example, if you know there are certain people, like a family member or a business partner, somebody who's important, where they are always going to be marked as reply. So for example, I actually told that if any email is marked as a pitch for a podcast guest or interview, categorize it as a reply. So that way it gets sent to me. But you can say, for example, make sure that notes from these senders, like bank charges, whatever, all get sent to the reply inbox or read inbox. And it doesn't have to necessarily do a draft. So basically you can make this as complicated or as simple as you want. But what I recommend for anybody who's trying this for the first time is to keep it really simple because of the fact that it will make life a little easier. And then as you start to get it fine tuned, you can actually make it do a lot more things like say, okay, I want to basically make sure that you only send me these emails, these senders, 
and you can keep adding information. Now, the other thing that's cool about this, we mentioned that there are files. You can upload files to the back end. So for example, you can see here, I have different files that are attached to various assistants. And so I can actually have it use those files as a point of reference. So for example, if somebody requests an interview and I wanted to write a draft, of a reply with the link to my Calendly, then I can just go into the inbox, look at what the, the AI wrote, and then just send it and hit send. So in all ways, this ends up being a huge time saver. And it's really just the beginning of what we're going to be able to do with this. So if you're somebody who feels overloaded by email, hopefully you found this video helpful. So now that you have seen the Zapier setup, I think the thing that you actually care about here is how the inbox actually looks when this is done. What you're looking at here is the private email address that we set up for the AI to categorize and tag everything. And you can see here, almost 95% of these emails do not require any sort of response. They're just things that have accumulated over time because I've subscribed to different services, things like that. So you can see it categorized everything as relax. If it wasn't, you can see here pretty much everything here got categorized properly because most of this is just a bunch of notifications. Now, a couple of things to note here is that I can actually say, okay, you know what? I want to know when I have bank charges or those kinds of things like charges. So I could basically have those sent to my inbox so I want to read them. And then the emails that it actually caught were ones that actually came from people. And then it forwarded them to my new inbox, which I will show you here, it has two emails in it. And that's it. And basically this has all been sorted, categorized, and filtered by AI. And let's take a look at the drafted replies. You can see here that it basically has a drafted reply as well as anything else that it needs to provide. And in a nutshell, you can basically at a certain point have it take over managing your email completely to the point where you're not even checking uh, email. So that's the next frontier of this. I would recommend that you set it up just composing drafts to start, but overall, it pretty much nailed everything. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll include a worksheet as well that you can use to get this all set up.